all for sticking around for this, by the way. I hope you enjoyed the first two episodes. The next eight are dope. I think at the end of the day, you know, love is universal. Music is a universal thing. Struggle is universal. Um, just the urban lifestyle is universal. You know what I mean? The book was London. The movie was Chicago. And now this is, you know, Brooklyn, Crown Heights. New York, so there's universal things, and what I love about it too is that it's also gender is universal, yeah. you know what I mean, and race is universal, so you can have two white guys and then transpose it as two females of color, which is, is dope. Well, I'll tell you, when I, when I heard that that was happening, I got... You was upset. I, I, no, I was not upset. You were like... Ah! No, I wasn't upset. I was concerned. who get upset about these sorts of yes, things we're gonna start coming for y'all and I don't stand for that sort of thing well, I thank you for that. there is a very certain very particular type of internet human person that is invisible that that gets all up in their feelings when you touch their childhood memories yes. and they all have very fast Wi-Fi and <laughs> Very fast. And, Extremely good typist. Yeah, and they don't uh, give a fuck if it's Black History Month. They will talk to you in a certain way. Yeah. And I don't, I don't appreciate that. Yeah. Did, did, what, did, what were the? Did those reactions actually come your way? Oh, I have no idea. I don't, I don't get involved with that. I'm not sitting on social media being like, what are they saying about me? Let me Google myself. What did they say? Do they like my eyebrows? I don't, <laughs> I don't get involved. Um, and that's why I have no idea, and I really don't care because my check is still getting cut. But hey, I okay. do think right. that what we did that, that is great is that we use elements and uh, themes and moments from the movie, which was, what, two, two and a half hours, roughly, mm -hmm. and throughout five hours of ten half-an-hour um, episodes, we draw it out, you know what I mean? And expand it, and so in many ways we, I feel like it's a nice balance of giving to homage to what was, and at the same time bringing about this newness um, and, and adding that layer to it, which is important, because otherwise why would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm so but glad. I also, sorry to cut you off, I also do think it is a mark of good writing at the end of the day. Yeah. You can't do this with everything, you know what I mean? So. Um, that goes back to what was written and the, how it's been able to reincarnate in mm -hmm. all those different ways. You cannot do that with most things. Something that I was very uh, happy to see with Charisse uh, was that they didn't dial back the, the level of, of Charisse. Uh, it matches the level of Barry from the original. I was so worried that they were gonna try to make you uh, not as in your face uh, because men in that industry never feel the need to be demure about anything. So why should, uh, should any of us acquiesce to that? Yeah, um, uh, first of all, thank you. I, I, to me when, I'm a huge Jack Black fan, first and foremost. Yeah. Um, and uh, this, I was told by my reps, they were like, you know, this could be a really good part because, you know, this was his breakout, so you might break out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I remember I had watched this maybe two times, like when it was then on TV. Yeah. Um, and uh, it stood out. I remember it. Like, I still can, like, give you a general wash of what it was about. And so when I auditioned or when I knew that this was a possibility um, as the actor, I did not do my research or homework or prep in watching the movie. I refused to watch the movie because I knew, because he's so strong and so iconic, it, you know, artists in general, we do this weird thing sometimes. Like, I, I, <laughs> I did a show in London on the West End. You couldn't tell me. I wasn't from London. Like, I, hello, how you doing? Everybody, all right? You all right, innit? Yeah. You, and 
then I would come back to America and I was like, yeah, mom, so listen here, yeah. My mom was like, what is wrong with you? You are from Philadelphia. Cut it out. <laughs> so, you know, like artists, we're, you know, we can be like sponges. You know what I mean? Or like when you're, when you're, when you're around like your close people, right? Haven't seen them in a while. You guys start your isms. You start doing the same stuff. That, so it's like, as an artist, that's like on one gajillion, you know? So... And on top of that, everything he does, you just want to, you know what I mean? Like, he's quotable. You know his, like, me, 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 me. Oh, yeah. school of rock. You know all of it. So it's that thing where it's like, you know, I did not, I did not want to watch it because I knew it would, like, infiltrate. So I, and knowing that and knowing that about him, to me, that was a given, almost like a prerequisite that was understood of if you do this character, you gotta, you gotta uh, operate on this kind of level. Yeah. Um, yeah so I just came in there to the best of my ability, you know, as if if a black female was put into this situation, what would that look like? Yeah. You know, and by her being um, someone that considers herself an artist, um, you know, and they're all music heads, you know that person that's like, mad passionate like they gotta they feel it in their core and they gotta get it out and if it doesn't get out it's like literally living in their body like you know it has to release itself um and I think there's something about her that is kind of like a prepubescent teenager you know where like she feels everything yeah and it's like no off she loves big she hates even harder you know what I mean and it's like but there's something about it that it's interesting, and something I like is that they didn't make it like the three amigos, where everything is just wonderful and moonbeams, and we always get along. Um, that I think New York in general has that like edge of we are expecting like someone to mess with you, you know, so you're always kind of on guard, even with your friends. Um, and I like that they they're a little like socially awkward, and they don't necessarily, especially Sharice doesn't has issues and dealing with emotions and speaking out her feelings and stuff. And so it was really cool to experiment and be in that kind of space, yet have all the feelings in the world, yeah. but don't know how to like, you know? So then it's like, ah, I'm gonna put on a song. Well, that's the thing about uh, Sharice. You, in these first two episodes, do such a great job of setting her up as kind of like the toughest one in this social circle, the the, yeah. the badass of the friend group. Yeah. But uh, and and this is not giving too much away. Later on in the in the series, she she puts her musical heart on her sleeve. Yeah. And lets the world know exactly yeah. what's going on. What's in there. going on? Yeah. And I feel like that's as vulnerable a thing as you can do. That's yeah. as emotional as anything else. Yeah. How was it for you to kind of? bring that vulnerability to the table after having set us up with this this bad bitch. Yeah, I mean, I think she's always a bad bitch. I mean, she is always a bad bitch. <laughs> but no, 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 I'm teasing. We can take but, multitudes. Um, no, you know. I mean, to be really transparent and honest with you guys, uh, that came from a very personal space. Um, I'm a musician first, and I trained to be a classical, or I am a classically trained opera singer, and I had got kicked out of school uh, for it, well, yeah, I got kicked out of opera school, and my mom was like, you need to get your credits and graduate, so go on, on over to acting so you can get that <laughs> diploma. And But in that, like, you know, they, they, in my, like, jury, jury is like when you perform and, you know, do all your pieces. So basically, in a nutshell, they were upset we were doing an opera, Aida, and I was like, look, I just feel like you know, I'm in an interracial relationship. I'm about to be buried alive for the man that I love who put me in slavery and I once was a queen and da 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 You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's tense. It's a lot. And I was like, I feel like, you know, I, sh I should be like, you know, doing that acting thing or something, at least knowing what I'm talking about. Not that I wanted to be an actor. And so I had worked with a guy from the acting department over in their, like, theater department. Um, and he was just coaching me on the opera. And they found out but I wasn't keeping a secret, and they kicked me out because they were, they felt as though I couldn't be loyal to both, and I was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to act. I just, I'm doing this. I'm in this lane. I didn't know there was a turf war like that. No, actually, it really is. I think if you don't, if if your programs aren't like conservatories based, 
uh, musical theater programs, which has that in between, yeah. then they get very territorial. Yeah. That the music or theater side is like, oh, you're leaving us for this. And so they basically like read me for filth on my jury and was like, maybe you should be a music teacher. And you're like, what? You know what I mean? Or they no, were, no offense if there are any No, no offense. No, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> they could have said, maybe you should work at a grocery store. Like, it just wasn't what I was doing. It's not my major. Like, and so I, in that moment, as they were, like, you know, like, saying all these things, like, I could feel inside, like, this isn't true. Yeah. And you have to protect yourself right now. So it was like, doo -doo -doo. Do you know what I mean? Of like, put up the wall yeah. to protect yourself. But in me putting up the wall, I closed that part off from myself. Mm. So for years, I didn't sing. You know what I mean? It was very vulnerable. So uh, that, like, to tap that into that sentence this, just viscerally yeah, upset me. I didn't me. sing for a while, yeah. a long while. And I remember when I got into Yale, I was like, look, in my interview, I was like, look, I came here for theater. I don't want to do nan musical. I'm not humming anything. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. First thing project we did, we did uh, Jelly's Last Jam, and I played two characters in a musical, and I was like, F y'all, because I told you I'm not doing this. But it was necessary because it slowly began for me to reincorporate my journey back into slowly getting back into music. So that side of Sharice, I get that very, very viscerally and, and being willing to be open and share that. Um, and that's why low key, all their conversations that they have about what's your top five this, or when they get into debates about, you know, music and their opinions, um, it means a lot to Sharice because she's trying to figure out who she is as an artist and as a human being, to mm -hmm. be honest. So they're just being music heads and like, you know, yeah. oh, because da la la, rattling off facts. But for her, it's, it's on a whole nother level, and they're actually investing into her, though they don't even necessarily know it, because she's really trying to figure out who am I, and okay, well maybe I want that aspect of that artist, but, but not that other part. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like she's really, they're just talking, but she's absorbing it all, because uh, she's really trying to figure out what artist am I gonna be, and that's a, that's a big feat. It's a big feat, and honestly, enviable. Uh, looking back as someone who feels the same way about music, I miss that era of discovery. Yeah. I miss dropping the needle on something for the very first time that's been around for like 30 yeah. years and getting that feeling. I miss finding out what my musical identity is. Yeah. I don't think that's something that as you get older, you realize is happening until something like this comes along yes. and you are able to look back. Yes. Uh, like that song you just heard yeah. at the end credit or Paul McCartney. I didn't even know Paul McCartney got down like that. Oh no. Paul McCartney slaps. Didn't even know. Wings got bops. Didn't even know that song. I was obsessed with that song for two straight weeks and on said, ooh, bitch, shut up, Divine. And I was like, no, guys, come on, hey. And they're like, it's, oh, stop. Yeah, I was obsessed with that song. But it was cool because through this show, like you were saying, like, even as you get older, you have that young, like, what is this song? And being obsessed for it for a week and wanting to know all the lyrics and the history behind it and the different chord progressions yeah. and geeking out on it. Yeah, it's exciting. There's a moment for Sharice later on in the series where we find out what her, like, white whale is yeah. what she's been looking for the object of her desire yeah what is that for you oh god um honestly and this may sound super corny i feel like i'm doing it do you know what i mean like i feel like thank you I like yeah that. i feel like i'm doing it i i mean Things are, you know, it's like the thing where it's just, it's flowing, you know, and it's, it's not, things are falling into place, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the, 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 the cars are stacking, it's, it's hard, it, it's a lot of sacrifices, but it's, I don't know, things are just in a kind of space where it's, it's not, not having to like push and force your way in as much and that usually to me is an indicator of like okay let's just keep flowing with this and ride it 
and yeah. see where it goes. You have to learn how to let go, though. It's good. I think it's very crucial and important to have goals and visions and, and set, you know, forth plans. But then at a certain point, you have to learn when to let go and let it kind of go on autopilot because I think that's where the nuggets are. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying yeah, and I'm absorbing that yeah, yeah. <laughs> as a performer. I, uh, I want to, to talk about uh, the, the creative process and bringing this series to the screen. Another reason that I was concerned when You're I mad. found... I was not mad. You was, uh, it's fine. It's no, fine. I, I was preparing for this conversation. Uh, I, I, because, well, I was concerned because I didn't know who would be writing it. I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. didn't, when I, when I first found out that it was happening, I was like, okay, who's adapting this? Right. And then I found out who was starring in it before I found out who was writing it. Yeah. So I was down with uh, women being on screen. But what I didn't want was some 50-year-old dude writing their voices. So yeah. when, I, when I found out that women would be writing for these women, that concern yeah. melted away. Yeah. Tell me about the, that process, the table reads, the, the feedback, the, the building of these characters with, with women writing these Oh, lines. yeah. I mean, um, women get it. They know. Yeah. You know? So we was just... We do. We were just day. collaborating, doing our thing. It really was easy. You yeah. know what I mean? Not easy. I mean, this is honestly one of the hardest jobs I've ever done. Um, but in regards to the creative process, again, it was just flowing. Mm -hmm. You know? So it was... We knew what we desired and we wanted um, to portray about these characters, especially, it was a big, I would say one of the biggest conversations was how can we portray authentic, real black women that are outside of the stereotype in which we're used to seeing all the time? How can we see black women who are eclectic into, into different types of music? There are women that, um, you know, fulfill the, the role or connect with Rob's character as well as there's women that connect with Sharice, but you don't see these kind of women um, told in stories. So that was a huge, huge, huge thing for us of like, we're not, we're not gonna go the easy route. We're gonna really dig in. And so the backstory and history and psychological makeup of the character was probably one of the strongest, most um, talked about things, so that once we were then true to the character and making her authentic, then it was like you can play within the given circumstances. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then it was kind of like, and really locking in and knowing the woman, you can't kind of really go wrong. It's just like we can do this scene in five different versions. It depends up to the editor, the, the you know, EP, whoever it may be, as to what version they want to do. But as long as we continue to be true to these women um, and allowing them to have uh, desires, wants, and needs that are not based on what a man tells them, you know what I mean? Or at those kind of things and where, you know, her character can go through these things um, and have an opinion and be messy and, and imperfect and and yet try to, you know, pull it back up. We don't, we don't often get these kind of stories. Or then it's like, she's a rebel, or she's <laughs> a wild child. And it's like, or she's just a human being and doing stuff that everyone else does too. So that was really, really key to us. Authenticity was a big thing. I think New York plays a huge piece in that, and that New York is a whole other character within itself. Yeah. Um, and a very particular view of New York, a very particular kind of New York. Yes, that is the New York. Who dominated the themes? Wow. Well, that's interesting. The common theme is that we are dominated by white men, and that is that. <laughs> that is real, and that is that. I hear what you are saying. Yeah. And no. Well, no. that's another a theme here in, in the show is the, the kind of pros and cons of not working for the man. Yeah. Where, uh, where Rob, uh, you know, she's a, she's a business owner, she's an entrepreneur, yeah, she's, she, is. she is a part of the community, and she is tired 
Yep. All the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it is. It is. It is great to see black women on stage or on screen owning businesses. Uh, yeah. In, not in a pencil skirt and heels. Like just. Yeah. Just doing shit every day in the neighborhood. Yeah, looking like Doug. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that outfit yet? She has an outfit where she's wearing like baggy Levi's, a white tee, and a classic green V-neck cut off vest, sweater yeah, she vest. she looks like Doug Funny. And we were like, bro, wardrobe just dressed you like Doug. Yeah, patty mayonnaise And she's like, no the way. It was our running <laughs> joke, yeah. She's really into the beats right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about your co-stars here. Uh, I don't think that that chemistry could be faked. I loved the scenes with all three Thank of you together. You. Talk to me about Zoe and David and the time that you got to spend uh, with yeah. them. Um, David's a trip. This is David's first thing. I mean, to my knowledge, you have to fact check me, but I believe this is David's first like major thing. And what's crazy is... When I was testing for like the final, final, final callback, um, he came up to me, he was like, hi, I'm David, I'm your reader. He said, I'm your reader. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, cool, nice to meet you. Usually readers don't talk to the talent, but okay. <laughs> and so it's I cute. was like, it's cute. yeah, it's like, like confident. Yeah, and I was like, like okay, hi. <laughs> um, and then we went in and did the scene and I was like, wow, like this reader is off book. Like, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, and then they were like, thank you so much, Dave And I remember walking out and they were like, okay, now David, we're gonna um, do this next scene where Simon, you know, whatever, we're talking about the character that he was reading for. And I was like, oh, wow, he's going to keep on reading. <laughs> and then I remember when I had got the job uh, and I had went to the writer's room to, like, speak with the writers and discuss, like, what Sharice's journey and trajectory would be for season one, they were like, yeah, and uh, David is our Simon. And I was like, no way. Good for the reader. The reader booked the job? <laughs> And they were like, no, no, he wasn't. I go, no, 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 he was the reader. He told me he was the reader. And they were like, oh, gosh, I think he used the wrong words. Like, no, he's the actor. But he didn't know because this is his first thing. And he said he was the reader. That's, and he was the actor. That's adorable. Isn't it? <laughs> and there's some places where we film, because he lives in, he's lived in this neighborhood for at least 10 years. Convenient. Yeah, and there were some, um, like, he used to be a bartender, and there were certain places that he was like, yep, used to work here, ha <laughs> And we were like, yes, David, you made it, full circle. Yeah, so David's amazing, and super humble, and just a natural. He, I mean, we're a lot, me and Zoe are a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he really, <laughs> it's just like, he knows like that perfect balance of like, I'm gonna talk, no, I'm not gonna talk right now. You know what I mean? Like he just knows how to like keep the plate spinning, so to speak. And that is a very, very hard thing to That's do. That's what bartenders do. Well, then that That's is a skill why set. Shout out. Shout he's out. a natural. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he, it, that's, that's a hard thing to do and not at the same time disappear, you know? Yeah. And he's still very much so a prominent and extremely necessary piece of the puzzle. Um, so David, it's, it's super organic and also extremely talented, not to say that it's like, it's just him playing him, it's not. But um, he's very talented and does a great job of managing us, if you will. Mm. Um, and then Zoe is a complete badass. I mean, besides hearing that it was going to be two, you know, they're going to flip it and do two people of color. That's, I was like, okay, yes. And then they were like, and it's Zoe Kravis. And I was like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you just know by knowing how, let's be honest, we portray her in society and, and how we perceive what we think she is, which in many ways, all the good things that you think she is, she is. And then a thousand times more of that and even better yeah. that I already knew the cool factor, the authenticity, the, the edge was automatically going to be there. We didn't have to worry about writing it in. And when we did need it, I would knew that she would just know to do it. So what's so dope is that for her, this project, I believe, is her first time being a lead mm -hmm. and executive producing. Okay. Um, and she just, to watch her navigate that and juggle all those balls, literally, 
Um, it was just really amazing and inspiring to watch. And she's so professional and she's so on it. And I do not know how she does all that and then can get on set and do a scene and totally be into it. And, and they're like, cut. And then they're handing her things and being like, okay, so what director do you want for episode four? And do you like this mug or that mug? And she's like, mm, that one. Okay, we're not gonna do the scene. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's, it's really inspiring and it lets me know, us know it's possible. You yeah. can do it. Yeah. So hats off to Zoe Kravitz. Hats off to Zoe Kravitz. Yeah. And the, the elephant in the room is that this is generational at this point for the, for the Kravitzes, for the Kravitz Bonets. And, uh, generational, what do you mean? Her mom was in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that is yeah. also adorable. It is adorable. Yeah. Every episode, I was like, is she going to be in this one? <laughs> okay, no, but is she going to be in this one? And what if her dad <laughs> was in this? And then I was like walking to a store, and I was like, oh, hey, Lenny Kravitz. And she was like, divine, no, I don't, I don't know. I'll talk to them. And I was like, no, no, really, I feel like it'd be great for Sharice's part. I was trying just, just every cameo, chance I could. What if Sharice falls in love with Lenny Kravitz? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe she needs that for her story. I ship it. I think he has like a ranch in like Portugal, and I maybe can see Charisse that for you. goes there to yeah. write. Yeah, exactly. Speak into existence. Speak mm -hmm. it into existence. Uh, can we talk about Natasha Leone? Yeah. Yeah, you guys. Natasha Leone directs one of the episodes. Episode, one, one episode? six. Episode. Remember six. that episode six. It's my favorite episode. She is uh, a long-standing, is it Wednesday today? Because she is my woman crush. I love her so much in everything. Yeah. Tell I me love that raspy voice. I hey, do. Hey, listen, so uh, I'm like, oh, uh, you're so New York. If cigarettes and oh, coffee were a person. That. Oh, I love her. Yeah. No. Tell me about sh being on set and Natasha Leone is your boss. She completely elevated everything. Yeah. To be quite honest with you, it was really cool to, I don't remember if she was our first female director. I want to say yes. May have been our only female director. Don't remember, but so, I think so. Um, but completely changed the whole space and energy. It was really cool to see Natasha call the shots and that these white guys are like, uh, what, what do you mean? Oh no, <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's like, listen, we're ready. What are we waiting for? And not to be like bitchy at all, but like she was on it. But it's so interesting to see how one could be like, oh, that one, she's tough, and it's like, or she's really good at doing her job, and she's cutting out time that's unnecessary, yeah. and where a lot of times we're just sitting and waiting anyways. Um, so outside of her running a dope ship, if you will, um, just so creative, you know, mm -hmm. and, and seeing it in a fresh new way, and like, I feel like that one is a huge nod to New York, even more so. Um, she definitely pushed my limits, you know, when it was kind of like, she was like, okay, cool. So your character's physical, I'm gonna give you physical. So in this episode, we're like sprinting up and down oh, a I New York it. block. I felt it in my soul, I was out of breath It was for like you. the hottest. <laughs> of course, the day we filmed, they were like, I woke up in the morning and the news came on, I was like, today's the hottest day in New York. A record breaking hot. And I was like, ah, I'm gonna die today. Today's the day, God. And so, um, we're, yeah, we just kept sprinting and sprinting and sprinting. But it was like, I wanna make her proud. I wanna make her proud. Um, but just so creative and just taking to a next level and meeting us where we're at and pushing it even further, you know, and that's exciting because I think sometimes with TV and when you continue to do this stuff, it can get in an interesting way, very nine to five-ish, where you're like, okay, clock in, I know who this character is, boom, 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 say my lines. Like procedurals can be like, I don't know what that chick does in Law & Order at oh. this point. I, I don't have Cash any checks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, but I, you know what I mean? like. Yeah. That's not, that's not my ministry, I can't do that, I'm not built to do that, but um, yeah, it can get monotonous like that sometimes, and it's really exciting when someone can come in and shake it up, and, and then I think it then set a precedent, then moving forward, I still think that episode six sticks out. 
And it's, it, do you think that? I do, t I do as well because it sets up the second act of this story really, yeah. really well. It introduces the motives of some characters that yeah. you were, were on the fence about and shows uh, Charisse in the middle of, of her character arc of her growth. Yeah, you're seeing her frustration start. It's like she's starting, to, she's starting to get a little messy, like a little raw, but well, actually very raw. Yeah. It's starting to come out a bit more, and then she's becoming a bit more unhinged uh, and um, is feeling lost and a lack of loyalty and trust, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's, getting, it's getting dicey for her. Um, and yeah. She, she really captured that in a really cool way. I do think if we get a second season, it will be imperative to, you know, when you can sometimes be like the best friend of the lead. Sometimes in a way it's like, you never know where they're from, where they live. They're just yeah. this random person that's meant to service the lead, yeah. you know? So yeah. I do think that that will come into play, but we've discussed about like relationships and stuff like that with her, but I think Sharice is one that's like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, got what I needed, let me get back to my music. Personally, yeah. I think she, like, I don't think she's like, what did it mean, and oh no, why did we break up? But she's like, cool, thank you so much, appreciate you, I may see you in a month. Because Maybe. everybody else's drama is, is you know, enough. For yes. her. She gets into it, she's helpful, but she's yeah. also like, you know what, this is your thing, I don't have time Yeah, one thing I really that. respect about Sharice is she's that type of person who's very direct with you, and what you see is what you get, and so therefore there's not a lot of mystery in the sense of like, you know, are you playing games? She'll never play games with you, like, she's straight up front, yeah. When, uh, I'm gonna say when, season two, uh, because I'm speaking that into existence Ooh, as well. Thank you. Uh, and, and you know, like I said, we're not spoiling what goes down with Sharice, but we've all read the book. You know, we all kind of have a, a general idea. What are you hoping that she gets to explore? Uh, what part of her story do you hope that we get to find out? Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident if, it, when we get season two, you will explore her as a fully realized artist. Not that it's like, boom, she then made it, yeah. but where it lays off, you now, it's talked about of her being an artist and wanting to be a performer and all those things. And I believe that uh, season two, you will now see what it's like for her to be an artist and how in her devoting that time, I'm assuming, you know, like, that will alleviate and she won't be able to have as much, you know, undivided time with them or she then meets new people, mm. you know, that kind of, I don't know, nothing's been written, but I'm just saying like, I know for sure her as an artist is going to begin to develop and everyone will develop. I'm already like, and then there will only be one more season. <laughs> Cause then she goes to LA. <laughs> no, I don't know, but well, we yeah, get to I think see artistry. The, all of these other artists do do their thing yeah. uh, in this series, and I'm just really excited for you to just be this the song song songstress. Are we saying songstress yeah. in 2020? Yeah, songstress that you so neo you soul of you. I love that. Yeah, and also just being like fuck y'all opera school. I'm doing this on my own terms. Yeah. <laughs> So if we've, if we've learned nothing else today, it's that opera school is not really... Not Almost really cracked up to me. <laughs> <laughs> Divine Joy Randolph, everybody. I'm Thank so, you. so happy. Tell all your friends about High Fidelity. It premieres this weekend. Cuddle up with your Valentine and binge the whole season. Yeah. Thank you.